Okay, let's go recording. Uh, so welcome to the International Association for the Study of the Commons second annual World Commons Week. Uh, you're attending the regional keynote webinar for Asia, where Professor Han Cho of Jeju National University in South Korea will be giving a talk entitled Revising the Concept of the Commons for Commenting and Recommoning. Um, my name is Charlie Schweik. I'm a professor at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. I'm also a member of the International Association for the Study of the Commons Executive Council, and I'm the organizer of the World Commons Week event. I'm, I'm moderating this talk on behalf of the ISC Asia Co Coordinator, Juan Poulin, who is traveling today and wasn't able to make it. As uh, attendees may understand, World Commons Week is a global annual event celebrating and promoting both commons research and practice and has two primary components. Uh, one is local coordinated events around the world. And this year we've, uh, we're running a set of regional and or continental keynote webinars. The latter is one of IASC's efforts to promote global dialogue on the commons research and practice by taking advantage of internet-based webinar technology, allowing our community to gather virtually while reducing our community's carbon footprint and its impact on the global atmospheric commons. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm really happy uh, to, to have this webinar today. I have our speaker here and attendees, uh, they continue to come in. Thank you for joining. So let me explain, um, before I introduce our speaker, let me explain um, how this will work. Uh, we've asked Dr. Cho uh, to talk for more than, no more than 35 minutes. I, I'll act as a timer and I'll be providing him a reminder uh, when when he's at 10 minute time and five minute time. And then the last 15 minutes of the session will be left for question and answers. For attendees to, to ensure the webinar functions well, we've limited uh, video to the speaker. The, the sp speaker has only, is the only person with video and uh, the attendees are all muted. And that's in part to keep bandwidth down so the webinar works well. So we, given that, to ask a question, this is the key point. Please use your Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So if you attendees, if you've got a computer, uh, you can move your mouse around the Zoom screen and you should see a Q&A box. Um, and that box will open and you can type questions in. And um, Professor Cho and I will be able to see those questions and we'll be able to respond to them during the question and answer. If you can't find the Q&A, you can use the chat function and I'll be monitoring that. Or you can, worst case, use the raise your hand function and I can see all of the attendees and I'll see that your hand is raised and I'll unmute you so you can ask your question. Um, I do see there's at least one attendee that's come in by phone. And so for that attendee, if you have a question you wanna ask, you can dial star nine to raise or lower your hand and I'll see that and I'll unmute you so you can ask your question. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, again, if you've got any pro technical problems, use the text um, or the chat window and I'll, I'll try to help. Um, so let me turn to our speaker now. So Professor Han Cho is a, the director of Jeju National University, uh, the Social Science Korea Research Center on the Commons and Sustainable Society. And he's a professor of the depart at the Department of Sociology in Jeju National University as well. Um, and if, uh, people probably know this, that this is in South Korea. Um, he's written papers on the commons, such as Revisiting the Commons in South Korea, and another paper uh, on Zinzin and Jeju, the island of the commons, um, that was written in Korean in 2016. 
So with that, uh, it's an honor to have you here to give a talk on this uh, really interesting subject. And I'll turn it to you, I'll turn it over to you, Professor Cho. Hi, how are you? I'll say for everybody muted, very well, thank you. <laughs> can you, can I st start? Yes, yes, you can, very well, you can start. Yeah, uh, hello everybody. Um, we don't have um, much time, so I'm going to uh, start right now. Um, as my introduction, uh, Ostrom, I try to uh, define, uh, redefine um, the concept of commons. Uh, actually, Ostrom's definition of commons is uh, useful in uh, preserving the commons that exist. However, uh, in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, uh, that experienced the colonialism, it is more important uh, reserving the privatized commons. Uh, I call this uh, recommoning. Uh, then preserving commons in uh, those areas. Uh, for the purpose of recommoning, Ostrom's criterion for the commons of non-excludability is not uh, useful. Uh, it is because Almost all of privatized commons are excludable by modern law and technology, and thus uh, not commons anymore according to um, Ostrom's uh, definition. Dr. Cho, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, I can't move your slides, so you have to hit next slide if you're, uh, you're still on the first slide. I'm not, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I, 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 I moved. Oh, can you can you see? Right now, I, mean, I can only see the first slide, uh, the IASC World Commons Week slide. Oh, really? So, yeah. Can you um, hit down uh, your PowerPoint to move it to the next slide, or? Uh, I I see the next slide now. But how how come? Okay. Yeah, it's not projecting here. Sorry, folks. Just one minute while we get this fixed. Um, yeah, I can't, um, I can't really do anything on my end. Um, but right now, all I'm seeing is the introductory slide. I'm not seeing your next slide. The introduction slide, but the uh, content is different, isn't it? Uh, it's still the one that I sent you, the introductory slide with your picture on it. You can, you can see the change? No, I can't. It's still, still staying the same first slide. Do you want to try to change the display setting again? Yeah, how, uh, how can I change? Um, okay. There you go. Okay, so now now I can now we can see your slides. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, how about this? Great, perfect. Okay, so keep, yeah, now we're good. Okay. Um, okay, there, therefore, a new criteria, criterion and definitions are necessary for recommoning. I, I suggested that uh, illegitimacy of a monopoly should be the uh, criterion of commons instead of non-excludability. That is, uh, certain resources where uh, some summons monopoly is not or legal legitimacy, uh, legitimist are commons and should be managed, managed commonly. Uh, the new definition supports uh, social movements for not only commoning, 
common property, but also uh, recommending certain private or club properties that have no or little legitimacy of a monopoly. Uh, I also suggest that the illegitimate, illegitimacy of monopoly of commons comes from the uh, golden rule, which is fairness and respect for human life. Um, next, I, I uh, focus on the uh, criticism and altern alternative definition of Eleanor Ostrom's commons. Um, this uh, this table is very uh, familiar with us, so uh, I I don't explain much more. But uh, sorry, uh, Ostrom, can, can, sorry to interrupt. Can you advance the slide? It's still on the introduction. Oh really? Yeah. Is it? Is there a, like a down arrow on your? Can you hit down arrow to move the slide? Yeah, I. I I I change the um, eye down, and then I can see the uh, okay, so slide. You have two. You have two monitors. It must be. Um, uh, yeah, but both of them move move together. I mean. Mm. Um, okay. Now, whatever happened there, now it went to the next. Why don't you stay with what you've got? It's it's okay now. Uh, this one. Yeah, let's just stay like that. Okay. Okay. So now you can now we can see the table. Yeah. Uh, Ostrom regarded um, CPRs as the commons in her early studies, uh, but uh, include the public goods into the commons in later studies. So um, I regard both the CPRs and uh, public goods as commons too. Uh, according to Ostrom, the commons are defined by non-excludability, which is uh, physical, technical, and economic uh, attributes. So uh, the boundary is, uh, uh, cannot be changed by common people. Uh, after the colonization of Asia, Africa, and Latin America, the commons lost the most of important uh, commons, that is uh, common land. Uh, through the land survey project and uh, project of colonial government. So Dr. Cho, we, uh, uh, one of the attendees has raised his hand, uh, so I'm going to uh, allow them to talk. Um, there may be a question of clarification. Hello, uh, Sun Hoon. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. You want to speak? Oh, okay. He says no. Okay. Okay. okay sorry. <laughs> sorry, Dr. Cho. Keep going now. Yes. Yeah, so according to Ostrom, uh, recommending by commoners is uh, impossible because the land is increasingly uh, excludable due to the tech, uh, the development of land measurement and uh, closed circuit technology. Uh, given the fact, I argue that commons must be classified based on uh, their social attributes, that is, uh, uh, legitimacy of uh, uh, monopoly. I argue that a uh, commons is a commons uh, not because it is non excludable, or, nor the cost of excluding other users from it, it, it is high, but because they believe that someone's monopoly on it is unfair or uh, makes other users not to survive. Uh, for example, uh, 
In Jeju Island, anyone can freely pick uh, uncultivated uh, bracken even on private lands. Uh, and uh, does, uh, we can see very similar cases in other areas, various areas in Hainan and uh, Cambodia and Thai and uh, even in uh, Solomon Islands. Uh, anyone can catch fish or uh, uh, pick edible grasses uh, on the harvested rice paddy, uh, which is um, private land. So um, although the land are uh, excludable and private land, uh, they are common at some times. At, at the same time, this demonstrates uh, the, uh, the, the non-excludability cannot be the criteria of uh, uh, commons. Uh, therefore, I redefine commons as natural resources, uh, artificial uh, facilities and institutions where someone's monopoly is unfair and uh, socially unacceptable. Uh, I also define commons with uh, rivalry as the CPRs and uh, commons without rivalry as public goods. Um, this, this table shows uh, uh, new uh, criteria and um, classification. In this table, um, uh, the boundary is flexible and can be changed by common sense and the public opinion. For example, the same software can be either a club good or pub uh, or public goods. Food and uh, clothes are getting uh, CPRs depending on uh, public opinion. I mean, uh, the food and clothes, clothes uh, according to Ostrom's uh, definition, uh, they are um, private goods. But uh, nowadays, uh, food and clothes uh, regarded, uh, I mean, get, getting uh, regarded, uh, regarded as uh, um, uh, CPRs. Uh, Uh, I, I try to show some cases uh, that support the new definition in Jeju. Um, Seafield management in Jeju is an example that supports my argument. Uh, here I focus on the seafield in Jeju where Hanyo, a female driver, harvest marine products such as seaweed, abalone, uh, conchi, top share and uh, sea urchins. Um, jurisdiction over the sea field in Jeju was not uh, granted to individuals, but to neighboring uh, villages under mutual agreement between them. The agreement is according to the custom of villages. Uh, closely looking into the custom, we can find the principles of managing commons. I think that fairness and legitimacy are applied as the fundamental uh, principles of managing the sea field among villages in Jeju. They can be materialized with the golden rule. Uh, golden rule uh, is about uh, fairness and uh, uh, respect for human life. These principles are also applied to individual, individuals or household within a village who use the sea field, a commons uh, for the village. In other words, uh, villages define the boundary of a specific uh, sea field based on customs, uh, based on the golden rule, and uh, force each other to follow the rule. Uh, 
the village commons are managed by the villager association or the uh, the association of Henya in each village, and the principle of principles of uh, the use of uh, sea field in each village are also based on fairness and respect for human life. The sea field that belongs to villages as a commons in the village uh, brings them many benefits with obligations. So Henya uh, in each village can pick marine products only with, within the sea field that belongs to their village. Um, oh, oh, um, case one uh, is about uh, uh, using the village commons rule. Uh, most, uh, this, this principle is applied to most of village in Jeju. Villages prohibit hangers uh, from harvesting if they do not participate in the joint work of the village, purifying uh, the sea field or uh, having uh, harvesting seaweed, etc. Uh, I think it shows the uh, principle of fairness. Uh, the commoners uh, have to do their uh, duty and obligation, and then they can get some benefit. Uh, however, uh, villages do not impose the obligation of joint work for the elderly and uh, designated special sea field where only the elderly can harvest uh, for their living. Uh, this, uh, this shows uh, some kind of uh, respect for human life. I mean, uh, elderly person uh, can be uh, in danger uh, because uh, if they don't uh, designate some special uh, sea field area. Uh, second is uh, uh, legend and several cases around the whole uh, Jeju. Traditionally, the sea imposes obligations on people in the village, as I told you. Uh, and then uh, it is all same uh, for the village. For example, when corpses were washed up on the beach by the wave, uh, the people of the village having jurisdiction over the uh, sea field had to vary uh, the corpse with a funeral. Any village that did not bury the corpse was considered to declare that it give up its sovereignty over uh, that sea field. This also uh, shows some kind of fairness and respect of human life. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, with the fairness, uh, uh, the uh, reciprocity and then uh, the uh, balance with uh, obligation and uh, uh, rights. And then uh, uh, with the respect of human life, I mean, uh, even they don't want to, they need to give some uh, funeral uh, for the uh, corpse, even though, even though they don't know about their name. Uh, they need to give some funeral uh, because, of, uh, because they, they are uh, human, human. So uh, uh, we can see this, uh, this kind of uh, tradition from the uh, Bom Chonchong legend and uh, Banongyo legend. It, it, uh, this, this legend came from a uh, different area of the Jeju. Uh, so we can uh, see the same uh, similar uh, legend from uh, various areas of Jeju.
and uh, we can see uh, the legend is very uh, powerful until recently. Um, so, um, this, uh, this figure uh, is a map of Hwabukdong. Uh, Gonipdong uh, shares its bound uh, borders with Hwabukdong. The original border between uh, Gonipdong and Hwabukdong was the uh, Hwabuk stream around here. Around here. Uh, Uh, but uh, this boundary was uh, changed later. Uh, toward Gonipdong, uh, uh, around uh, one kilometer from the uh, original boundary, and uh, it uh, it was marked by Gonipdong uh, villagers on the stone called Gamepang. Uh, this uh, uh, stone is uh, uh, Gamepang. Uh, th uh, this change was made uh, after uh, Hwabokdong people uh, give a funeral, the body on the beach. And then uh, the Hwabokdong people gave up. Uh, the, their sovereignty over the uh, sea field and the uh, beach. It happened in uh, around in uh, maybe 1840 or uh, nine, uh, 1900. And um, this map is the area of uh, surrounding Jigi Island. Jigi Island is located uh, 4.5 kilometer south uh, from uh, Hareri. Hare, Hareri is here. Uh, and uh, 6.5 kilometers southwest towards from uh, Wimiri. Wimidi is this um, village. Um, Jigi Island originally belongs to Hareri. However, uh, it started to belong to Wimidi after uh, Wimidi villagers buried the three uh, bodies of uh, soldiers 1945. So, uh, I would like to give some conclusions. Uh, Ostrom's definition and the theory of commons started from the first premises uh, that differences in the method of managing uh, resources originate uh, from other, uh, from their physical, technical, uh, or economic uh, attributes such as uh, uh, subtractability and non Closability. Therefore, the theory does not explain the fact that the same resources can be either private goods uh, or uh, common pool resources, depending on social conditions. So, uh, to address this problem, commons need to be defined based on social, uh, uh, their social and ethical uh, attributes. Uh, when a certain individual or group does not have the uh, legitimacy to monopolize a certain resource, the resource is a uh, commons. The example of managing the sea field in Jeju supports this argument on the illegitimacy of a monopoly that commons have. This kind of practice and action particularly in fishing village in Jeju, involves fairness and respect for human life. 
Therefore, I argue that the con uh, concept of uh, commons is based on the based on uh, golden rule. Uh, this definition of uh, this definition of commons uh, justifies a, a variety of commoning and decommoning movements. Uh, local knowledge, uh, common sense, and the golden rule, uh, and and some kind of uh, common sense of a go uh, golden rule uh, can change national law and legal practice. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, listening my presentation. Okay, I, thank you, I'm done. Thank you, Thank you. Um, yeah, because people are muted, you can't hear the clapping that's going on. But <laughs> um, at, at this point, uh, I'd, I'd like to, uh, and thank you so much for that very interesting talk. Um, at this point, I'd like to invite any of the attendees to um, type in questions into the question and answer um, box, if you can find that on your system. Um, you could also, if you can't find it, use the chat function and I'll, we, we will both watch that. So as people are um, uh, thinking about questions, um, Cho, let me um, ask you one which was on my mind and uh, connects to your last slide about um, the point that you were saying that this new definition might uh, create the opportunity for um, changes in, in nations around the definition of a commons. Um, and, and I know you gave the example of um, the, uh, the uh, treatment of bodies that washed up on shore. Um, I'm wondering, do you know of any examples, other examples, of where um, commons emerged, um, perhaps based on the the fairness, the ideas that you're proposing, um, where they've actually taken over a monopoly, an existing monopoly? Um, do, do you have any other uh, cases that you've seen where that's actually happened? Um, actually, in uh, in South Korea, we have many uh, 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 social movement to, to uh, recommoning uh, 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 public public uh, space yeah. to uh, uh, commoning, and then uh, we have some uh, movement to to make a, uh, public uh, uh park i mean uh even though uh, the land land was privatized okay uh, people try to uh recommoning uh that area and how is that how is that played out like how did it, so it was a social movement people would protest and did that lead then to some local um uh, property rights changes, or yeah, how did they manage actually, to make it happen? Um, same, uh, I mean, uh, actually, I am interested in uh, I uh, I am interested in uh, commons in Jeju because of uh, social movement in uh, Jeju to uh, recommoning uh, uh, groundwater. Ah. I mean, uh, um, before 1990, the groundwater belongs to the uh, uh, landowner. It was uh, totally uh, privatized. Okay. And then uh, uh, the landowner can uh, use the uh, groundwater uh, what they want. But uh, in 1990, I mean, uh, uh, 
the uh, people in Jeju had a kind of a tradition to use uh, groundwater as a uh, commons. So um, 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 some one um, uh, broadcasting uh, company uh, made some program and that, uh, that uh, argued that um, uh, groundwater is, uh, should be uh, commonly managed. And then uh, the people uh, supported the, that argument in Jeju. And then the uh, government to change, I mean, the local government to change the uh, law. So, uh, so uh, they started to uh, manage uh, on the uh, groundwater as a commons. Mm. So uh, nowadays, I mean, after uh, 2000, um, year of 2000, um, uh, the, the land owner cannot use their uh, groundwater. Mm. I mean, the, uh, they need to get some uh, permit from a local government. And then um, the, the, uh, after, after that, I mean, the uh, national government also changed the, their uh, legal practice. Wow. So, uh, so uh, nowadays, um, uh, in, in South Korea, uh, uh, no, nobody can use uh, groundwater in their uh, private la uh, land. I mean, uh, the, the public government uh, control the use usage of the uh, groundwater. It's, interesting. It's, uh, interesting. Yeah. So it's, um, again, I'm I'm watching the question and answer window. If anyone, any of the attendees have questions, please type them in or raise your hand or use the chat window. One of those three. Um, and while I, while I watch that, I'm just going to follow up by saying that gives me um, some great hope, <laughs> Dr. Cho, in that, you know, it, it, it feels to me that, at least in my part of the world, um, property rights are so strong. And um, the, the idea of recommoning is a, um, well, in cases like you just described, where it's gone the other direction um, from private property to commons, communal um, management, uh, that gives me hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you know the work by, um, uh, it's called the Peer to Peer Foundation and Michael uh, Bowman's um, is one, but they've got a commons transition project that um, you might Google commons transition. And I think they're thinking about this as well, but I haven't um, read a lot of their work, but I, I know it seems to be a, a, the idea of transitioning back to commons is something that seems to be gaining some momentum. Um, I'm, I'm noticing, okay, so we have a question. Do you see the question and answer window? Yeah, I can see. Do you want to read so, the question and then answer? Okay. Uh, does the golden rule and fairness allow a community to use uh, the commons for a certain period exclusively? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, if uh, the community um, uh, try to manage uh, the commons and uh, use very uh, effectively, uh, they can get some uh, legitimacy of uh, monopoly a uh, certain period of time, but uh, not uh, permanently. If they don't give up the, uh, uh, their duty and uh, uh, obligation, they they will lose. Uh, they uh, lose their uh, monopoly. Yeah, I I, I think I mean uh, according to the fairness, if somebody 
uh, manage and preserve uh, that um, uh, resources, uh, then they uh, they can have some kind of uh, right over the uh, resources. I think that that is fair. So uh, sometimes um, they can have some kind of um, uh, um, uh, right over the um, uh, resources. Okay. Okay, you've got a response. Uh, yeah, Park, uh, I, I'm going to actually unmute you in case you want to uh, speak. Uh, but go ahead, um, Dr. Cho, answer, you can answer the question, but I'm just unmuting. Uh, in that case, is the legitimacy of a monopoly given to the um, community, uh, right? Yeah, right. You're right, but uh, th that is uh, um, that is uh, not uh, permanently. I was you trying have to any... unmute the um, the questioner, but I can't get the uh, microphone unmuted. I'm sorry, In Quan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> In Quan says okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the attendees? Oh, okay. <laughs> no microphone. Sorry. No worries. Um, I had one other question. If you could go back to your table where you had um, your new um, depiction. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I'd I'd like a little, I'm, I'm still puzzling over the, the way this table works. And I think the example of food or of clothes moving toward a CPR, I didn't quite understand that point. Can you explain that? Yeah, um, um, food and clothes are uh, uh, necessary for or, or living of human life. So um, nowadays, uh, I mean, well, uh, kind of a welfare, welfare system is, welfare system makes food and clothes uh, 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 as a kind of um, uh, um, uh, resources and uh, uh, commodities that cannot be uh, monopolized. I mean, um, uh, if somebody needs food and clothes, we need to uh, supply uh, that uh, food and clothes. Because uh, uh, if not, they they will not survive. Okay, I understand. So now. I mean, many. I mean, we can uh, the people people's opinion. I mean, uh, public opinion. Uh, is changing according to the change. I mean, the, with the change, um, food and clothes is getting more. Uh, 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 I mean, the uh, CPRs and uh, commons. Okay, I understand the point now. Um, I'm s still just making sure any uh, attendees. Have any questions? Yeah, another question just came up. Do you want Do you want me to yeah. read it, or do you? Uh, okay. Uh, Locke said that uh, individuals laboring in individuals labor justify the ownership of the output of whole labor. Is labor enough to justify the uh, monopoly? What do you think about it? Um, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, labor is a very good 
uh, sources of uh, justifying the uh, monopoly, but not not only labor. Sometimes care. I mean nowadays, uh, I mean local disregards um, care of women. Uh, I mean uh, as a labor. Uh, but uh, care is very uh, important. So uh, some, I mean, uh, other activity, not, uh, not only labor, but also uh, care and uh, what is that? I mean, uh, political uh, activity and some kind of uh, um, uh, action. And I mean, the, uh, what is that? Uh, the, um, Hanna Arendt uh, distinguished uh, uh, political activity and then what is the um, uh, work uh, from uh, labor. I I think labor, uh, I mean, uh, work and active uh, activity and uh, care can be the sources of uh, justifying uh, monopoly. Very good. I'm again watching just the question and answer. Okay, <laughs> we got an okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions from the attendees? Well, I have to say that this is a very interesting uh, presentation um, and, a, and a challenging one in that it's, you know, some of these definitions, the theory of goods, um, these definitions have been around now. I think, you know, the last year's World Commons Week, we were celebrating 50 years of um, research and practice in the commons um, since the hardened tragedy, the commons paper. And so you're proposing a very interesting alternative um, definition. Um, and as a sociologist, in some ways, you're trying to change culture in the commoning commons scholarly uh, area to a different definition. Um, so I, I, um, I commend you for doing that, and I'm wondering if this has been published yet, or it, where you're thinking about publishing it. Um, uh, it seems like it's some very interesting ideas. Thank you. And uh, thank you, so, Charlie. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, so at this point, I think if the attendees don't have any further questions, um, I'd like to just take a minute to close um, the session. This is again the North American, or I'm sorry, the uh, the Asian Regional Keynote Address for the World Commons Week. I'm sorry, I've done uh, five different keynotes, <laughs> um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to get confused. <laughs> but um, on behalf of uh, the International Association for the Study of the Commons and all of the World Commons Week 2019 organizers, I'd really like to uh, say thanks to all the attendees who took their time um, today to, and attention, and especially to Dr. Cho for preparing and giving this very interesting keynote address. Um, we have no way to clap, given that everyone's muted, but I imagine there's a lot of clapping going on at this point to saying thank you, um, Professor Cho, for the, for the talk. Um, so this concludes the fifth of six regional or continental World Commons Week keynote webinars. We've had one for Europe, Africa, China, North America, and now Asia. Um, um, what you're seeing on the, on the screen currently um, was the last um, webinar for Latin America that'll happen on October 11th. And then the, the map you're looking at now, uh, next slide, yep. Yeah. The map you're looking at now for people who may not have seen this, these are uh, uh, point locations of um, people or, or organizations participating this week in local organized events, um, celebrating commons research and practice. 
Um, last year, we had 31 in our inaugural World Commons Week. This year, we have 55. So this is starting to build some momentum. Um, my message here is it's not too early to start thinking about possibly doing an event next year around this time for World Commons Week 2020. Um, so please, uh, folks who are on the call um, thinking about commons issues, think about doing that. The next slide, um, I know this is quite far away for people in Asia, but um, uh, the uh, University uh, of um, Arizona State University is doing a workshop in March that there's an open call for people who want to go there and work on projects. So um, that's on the, uh, um, the website that's on the screen. And the last slide. Uh, the point I want to make here is um, this, this was in Peru, if any of the people on the call were in Peru, the, the IASC um, conference in Peru this summer, um, the Asia kind of, the Asia community was very active and it was quite exciting to see. And I think on behalf of um, Juan Poulin, um, the IASC Asia coordinator, um, we're hoping that more of events like this um, will continue to happen to continue the dialogue between scholars and practitioners um, studying the commons in Asia. So um, we hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, if you're not a member of IASC, consider joining and becoming a member and joining this community. And uh, so I'll close at this point. Um, I'm going to stop the recording in a second. Um, but again, Dr. Cho, thank you so much for uh, your time and effort for putting this interesting talk together. And thank you, everyone, um, for attending. Have a good day, whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> Have a good day, you too. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's bedtime for me. Good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.